Welcome back everyone, I'm Canadian Moose Plays, and in today's episode, we are going to expand the city infrastructure and introduce our first citizens into the city. So let's head on over to our inspiration station. So here I am on location again at the Lionsgate Bridge that you can see above me and behind me. And I'm going to go up top to introduce today's Inspiration Station. Interesting fact about the Lionsgate Bridge is, as you can see behind me, it is actually for pedestrian and cyclists. Now it's a pretty narrow space and even just walking up here it was very intense. <laughs> <laughs> very disorienting, but very cool that it does allow for multiple methods of transport. It would be cool to see this bridge get a facelift or more work done to make it feel a little bit safer. But uh, yeah, cool fact about the Lionsgate Bridge. You can bike and uh, walk on it. So here we are on top of the Alliance Gate Bridge, and we're going to use that as the inspiration for today's episode. In game, we're actually going to use the Golden Gate Bridge, as I think it's the closest bridge that can replicate this. Now, an interesting thing about the Lions Gate Bridge in recent times with the growth of cruise ships, cruise ships is a huge economy booster for the city of Vancouver. And what's happening is that the bridge that we're currently on here is actually becoming not tall enough to fit some cruise ships. A lot of cruise ships actually have to go under the bridge at low tide and then back out at low tide as they can no longer fit. And it's been an interesting play here and how it's sort of affecting the city of Vancouver. So I wonder if we can tie some of that stuff into the bridge that we built in our city. But let's hop off of this bridge and dive back into game. So welcome back everybody to the time lapse portion and what you saw on screen there currently, feel free to pause it if you need, screenshot it, was the map texture replacer mod again. And the reason why I'm showing all of that to you, even though we've gone over the theme, is that a great friend of the channel here, Zarezi, I'm going to include a link for his YouTube in the description below, dropped two new themes on Paradox Mods, and I think they look absolutely incredible. They're Seaside Serenity and Vivid Cities. Check them out. Leave a like. Incredible themes to help make your cities feel a little bit more unique while we're stuck waiting for assets. And what you're seeing me build here now, this is my attempt at crafting a realistic marina. I wasn't sure what to do down by the waterfront and I got an awesome suggestion about trying to add a little bit more nature and I'm going to introduce that in this episode through a detailing measure. Unfortunately, I couldn't really get the park idea that was proposed in the comment to look that good down by the waterfront yet. Maybe I'll have the ability to do that in the future, so I figured let's put a big old marina here. Now again, we don't have sailboats and I have to use paths to make it work, but I don't think it looks too bad from above or in cinematics. It, you know, does the job for now and uh, all in, you know, it's not terrible. <laughs> so that's a way that you can add something like a custom, you know, visual, I guess, eye candy marina to your city using pathways there. But I noticed that they were a little bit too sunken down. And so they appear to be flooded, but luckily we have the power of move it to be able to rescue that. And yeah, man, with all these mods that we're getting, it's really starting to feel like cities one again, which is so cool. Now I want to show you a little tip here. If you ever move around a building or something happens and you notice that car is not connected symbol, what you can do is actually use one of the roads, whether you're using dev tools or uh, a mod to have it in your browser here. And you want to connect one of the invisible roads to it and you can actually delete the piece that you connected there as you saw and it will get rid of that message so super easy to do connect an invisible road to the marker draw it out delete the ple uh the piece that you drew out and then boom you're good to go error is gone so in today's episode we're going to be focusing on infrastructure and you might notice that my roads look a little bit different now i added a mod for a build that we're doing over on twitch which is actually a florida themed uh build kind of drawing inspiration off of the hype of gta 6 
And uh, with that, I thought that the avenue or the alleyway roads, they look really good when you have the Sea Game World mod roadware replacer uh, turned on. So using that mod to remove the roadware. But I don't know. It looks great on certain roads, but not so good on other roads. I would personally love to see a mod like that where it allows you to turn on roadware for certain roads and off for others. Because there are some roads like this avenue, I kind of prefer it with the roadware. So maybe it'll grow on me. But personally, I like the mod. I like what it does. I would just love to see it allow us to do that for individual roads. So I'm going to come in here and sort of introduce what I think my style of detailing is going to be for the waterfront here and give you guys kind of a flavor of what this will look like. But I'm first going to show you all why I'm not using move it to move things to the edge of the path, because what happens with move it currently is that when you raise and lower things with move it, unfortunately, it, the height doesn't stay if anything gets moved around it so if you accidentally move the road or you upgrade the road or you add a road connected to the road that you're detailing on everything that you have raised up and lowered will sink in height so you're going to see that here where i'm going to show off why i'm not using move it here because so we're going to bring this bench over we're going to drag it down there and we're going to raise i think we raise it up yeah there it is so we're going to raise that bench up to a height that we're happy with, but you'll see what will happen when I accidentally drag a road. And again, this applies to upgrading a road or creating a new road. And if you add anything to the road, it's the same thing. So you'll see what will happen here as we get this bike rack in. And yes, we are adding the bike rack. <laughs> despite it so there you can see what happens now it not only sinks it down but the prop actually conforms to the terrain and so as you can see because of it conforming to the terrain there as we move it up they're now completely angled so we can't even drag them up to fix it right so what i'm going to do is stick with this detailing on the roadside where it's on level terrain and it won't actually sink down um, so hopefully that's something that can get added to move it is the ability and I don't even know if that was move it necessarily that prevented things from sinking when raised or lowered in city skylines uh, one uh, but uh, yeah whatever mod did that maybe it was move it that would be super cool to have that back so there we go adding in a <laughs> beautiful the beautiful bike racks again I think it'd be cool if we get a DLC dedicated to bikes because not only do you get all hands on deck, you know, a full team dedicated to it because it's a DLC, but the other big thing with it is how cool would it be to have like some new bicycle animation? So obviously people riding bikes around and, and you know, getting that kind of animation, but imagine an animation where we can get people putting their bikes away, like in a bike rack or, um, you know, uh, I guess bike rack would be the <laughs> main spot, but like some animations, you know, of stuff like that. I think that would look so, so cool. So unfortunately, this stuff is just purely detailing. It doesn't add any functionality to the city other than making the city look pretty. So people won't sit at the bench. So uh, it's unfortunate that prop benches are like this again. It means that we'll need another butt marker like we did in Cities 1 to get people to actually sit at benches. Uh, but yeah, all in, I'm pretty pleased with this detail and it's something that I think looks nice. So I'm going to place one down for now. And eventually what I'm going to do off camera is actually come in and copy what I'm doing here. Since there's no copy option and move it yet, I'm going to copy all of this single handedly. And, it, you know, it'd just be a lot. I don't need to show all that footage, but I'm going to do that across the entire waterfront at uh, some some point, some when I eventually <laughs> when I had time for it. So let's get on to the infrastructure. So we're going to have that road connect up there. And I'm going to actually take this other road here and lead it through the bridge gap there. Um, kind of makes a little bit more sense for this road, in my opinion, to lead up, cut through and across there just looks nicer. And then we're going to drag that road out. And we are going to begin work pretty soon here on the bridge, the main focal point that you saw in the inspiration station. So the final build that we're going to do here is going to be that bridge. And we're a bit limited on some of the assets that we have for it as well, too. So I had to, um, well, you'll, you'll see, I won't spoil it, but the bridge asset we used is rather famous. And, um, while it is, you know, super iconic and super well known, I think it still works and does the job. 
But first, I wanted to add a ramp and add some turning lanes to the off part of the bridge here. So we're going to give them their turning lanes there so they get an extra lane turning as they come onto the main arterial road. And then I figured, you know what, let's add a ramp as well to connecting to the other side as sort of a bypass ramp. So we're going to do that here, and I'm going to introduce you to a feature of Move It that was added in between this episode and the last episode. A feature that I am so so incredibly excited got added it is oh my god it, it's yeah it's it's the feature that i wanted when i first saw that you could use kind of like a miniature node controller in game but first we gotta finagle the road get it to line up get it to look nice and good and we're so close we still moose you gotta adjust that bottom one it's not lined up yeah yeah that's close oh, you missed the oh no I missed the other one. I think I go back for it, though. I remember going back. I think I fixed it. <laughs> the other one where the turning lane is, it's perfectly lined up, and my OCD is just uh, screaming, you know? But I think I notice it eventually here. I think it's on this point, yeah, where I'm like, oh, the whole thing. Yeah, there it <laughs> Okay. There it is. Yeah, it's... Um... You know, if that wasn't the case, I would just stop the recording right now and, and go in and fix that <laughs> in game. <laughs> but there it is. That looks much nicer. So we're going to come in here and adjust the uh, one lane that leads on to the ramp. And this allows us the opportunity to mess with move it because you'll see that the one way on ramp is way off. And that whole intersection just looks really wonky and bad. We can do so much better. So we're going to go in and actually adjust that on ramp. Uh, sort of the part that it connects to the road. First draw out our roads. I like to draw out the roads for quite a ways. Just kind of gives me an idea of the spaces that I'm going to be working with as well too and kind of what my ideas were at the time when placing the roads. So now if you come in, if you use the left alt key when dragging these lines now, it has snapping. So left alt key, hold it while dragging out the node manipulation line. Snapping was added to move it. It is incredible. It's so, so heckin' cool. But uh, let's do some terraforming first, yeah? Let's get it nice and flat because stretching these nodes out will cause them to warp in and be a bit messy with the terrain. So I do prefer using the node manipulation on parts where it's flat. So level terrain there. So we're going to drag that road out and then we're going to come in with move it and sort of see what we can... Um See what we can do here with it and make it look really nice. While we're doing this as well, too, I wanted to give a shout out to the 5B1C that is put on by Sardis. Uh, there's a bunch of other amazing creators that work with it as well, too. But I am going to be dropping the next episode of Five Builders One City. So super excited for this opportunity. I was supposed to be on it a while back, but I uh, just quite frankly, didn't have the motivation for Cities 2 then, uh, and I'm much more into the game now, so super excited for that. No spoilers on it, but uh, I'm going to actually implement some ideas from you, uh, sorry, not from YouTube, from Twitch. So if you ever were curious on what Moose is up to over on Twitch, I'm going to be implementing those ideas in the 5B1C episode that will be dropping next Friday. So if you're thinking, wait, so this video is, I'm watching this video now, right? This is a Monday. So there's a video coming on Friday? Yes. Two videos dropping in one week. Crazy, I know. In this economy, what the heck? Um, but yeah, we we'll drop uh drop in the AFIB1 City video this Friday. So make sure to check that out. Pretty stoked on it too. And excited to be able to um, show something cool that I don't think... I mean, there's a lot of cities content out there, so I probably missed it. But just something different that I don't think I've seen people experiment with. And anybody who lives in America, I, I hope I make you proud with that episode. <laughs> <laughs> that's my teaser check it out that's dropping friday on the channel here and again a huge shout out to the people behind 5b1c for giving me such an amazing opportunity for that and i'm so excited uh notice that we got some more uh goose geese ducks birds airplanes um sinking into the road that's cool i love that that is something is up with our birds <laughs> something is uh up with our birds so that's 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 good that's that's cool i like that uh we're gonna drag out our main arterial a little bit more there but all in i'm really really liking this starting layout really pleased with how things are sort of coming together there uh, and i started to notice here around the uh what will be our stanley park inspired area that the water was flooding a lot there so i was worried that the water appears to be rising and if that's the case i'm hoping we did raise our city if you remember uh for the last episode we raised it using move it 
quite a bit. Not crazy, but we did raise it up, you know, significantly. And so I'm hoping that will keep us safe during the uh, flooding here that appears to be happening or the rising sea levels. <laughs> Which, um, yeah, pretty on topic, I guess, you know. Uh, so everything did look fine. I think it's will be fine we'll see and then i'm using this road here as a marker into where i want our bridge to be and this is going to be our version of the lion's gate bridge from vancouver british columbia that you would have seen in the opening uh scene that i was on super cool and these scenes are a lot of fun um so shout out to the people that are um there that uh, commented and said that they liked it i really appreciated that i was kind of nervous to be honest if people would like it or if they'd hate it um what the reception would be but you know what at the end of the day i had so much fun filming those on location scenes for the the last episode our technical first episode you know the non-pilot episode so uh gonna draw out the bridge here and we're going to use the golden gate bridge but i wanted to give you an idea of so that's the again there's the golden gate bridge right and that's the asset we're going to use because it looks the closest to what i wanted to do i get it it's super iconic right it's like it's the golden gate bridge right but i wanted to show you just for scale what the other bridge looks like compared right and like this one it just doesn't compare scale right this we want this to be a huge focal point a massive bridge right and these other ones just don't compare and even if i go in with move it when you start to stretch it it actually separates where the cables are and so visually the cables wouldn't even be fully connecting the bridge it would look a bit off for me personally um like you can see it here right look how far away the cables are so with that and then it starts to dip in like it would just be a lot of work the golden gate bridge to me again scale wise still even if we went that route scale wise it just doesn't work you can see that one there the scale just isn't the same either and even if we go with the highway one it's a little bit eh, scale's not bad right compared to what we want to do looking at our inspiration with the lion's gate bridge but the golden gate bridge is just kind of the perfect asset for what i wanted to do so again this one's not actually bad like that's eh, you know it's doable i could make it work but it's not i don't know it still lacked that grand epic scale in my opinion that size that i wanted for it so i decided you know what heck it we're going with the golden gate bridge and uh let me know in the comments be like nah you should have done this or you should have done that i'm open i might change it who knows Honestly, I think I'm probably just going to stick with the Golden Gate Bridge until we get, you know, maybe assets. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I don't know. It does the trick for now. And you'll see when we draw it out. I think I do a good job of sort of blending it and making it feel, you know, like it fits. Making it fit, I think, in my opinion. So, but yeah, let me know. I want to hear from all of you in the comments. And talking about the comments, let's talk about the question of this video. So the question of the video, are you playing City Skylines 1? city skylines 2 or both games let me know i want to hear from all of you in the comments have you were you playing city skylines 1 like myself and came back to cities 2 um yeah i want to hear from all of you so we draw the bridge out and i realized that it feels a little bit too low like if you come down here it just didn't feel the size i want thank god we got move it so let's select those nodes and raise up the bridge so we're gonna get that whole thing raised up significantly and uh hopefully get it to look pretty nice <laughs> again i am pleased with it like it is i don't know it's gonna take a while where you're like moose it's the golden gate bridge yeah just leave that at the door and I don't know, just take it for what it is. I, th I do think the end product ends up looking really good. And I'm able to, at least for me personally, separate Golden Gate from this and make it feel, I don't know, like something that fits in with this city and with this project that we're, you know, building. We're limited with assets. So let's use what we have to our advantage. Like, look at this. Look at that scale. Like, that feels like the gold or the gold. Oh, my God. That feels... <laughs> <laughs> like the Lionsgate Bridge. And it's going to set such a cool backdrop, in my opinion, there. So I'm quite pleased with it. Uh, and I don't know. I hope you guys are okay with it. And I hope I can do a good enough job as we detail around it to help to blend it in and make it feel like it fits in the city, you know? And like it was a part of this city, so... I'll try my best with that and see what I can come up with. So we had to raise the train up significantly, of course, to where it, 
looks good, like what you saw there. So we're going to come in. I'm starting to get better at using this slope terrain feature. So we're going to slope that down for the road, and we're going to figure out how this road is going to connect into our city. Now, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to do the, I believe it's called the Lost Lagoon um, in uh, Vancouver, where this road essentially wraps around it and then enters into the city. I'm not sure that I'm going to do that yet. It's completely doable with the water features mod, where I can just like add a layer for it so i'm not gonna rule it out yet and i kind of i don't know i like i do like the idea of it i'm like yeah that's kind of cool it's got that coolness factor right so potentially and like imagine if we eventually get a park life dlc right where parks can function we're gonna have people walk out and around the lake and i just think it'll be really cool i'm also kind of excited you know thinking about future content for this game right uh, I'm kind of excited to build this city alongside the game and sort of retrofit things in as they get released. I don't know. Something about that just seems exciting to me. It's like, okay, they don't have, um, you know, we don't like, like the marina, right? We don't have sailboats. We don't have a marina. But imagine when we have them, we can go in and retrofit over that and include that stuff. I think that is, I don't know, just something that I'm looking forward to and really, really excited for. So, yeah, looking forward to that. <laughs> uh, that road that you saw me place there that we bulldozed into the middle, that's going to act as our barrier to where the Stanley Park begins. And I still feel like it is kind of big, but I mean, Stanley Park is kind of big, so maybe it's okay scale-wise. I haven't decided yet if I love it or hate it and want to, like, scale down. I The shape of it needs a little bit of work, so I am going to work with it, maybe some off-camera stuff and shape it up a bit. But all in... I don't, uh, like, the, the, the size of it, I don't know that I hate the size. It's not, it's more so the shape. The shape needs some adjusting, so maybe that'll change the size of it. But, uh, all in, I don't know, it, it works. I'm pretty, <laughs> I'm pretty pleased with it. It does the job. So we're gonna come in and terraform that and just flatten that all out. But I think this looks pretty good. And it's going to look even better here when you see me add some custom retaining walls to this road. And I don't know. My goal is to sell you all on the Golden Gate Bridge today. We're using the Golden Gate Bridge. Let me try and sell you on it. So we're going to detail in trees and fill in the spots that we sort of left empty there. And I decided, you know what? We need even more trees here for our Stanley Park one, right? It's based off of Stanley Park. Let's get heck ton of trees up in here so we're going in there with the tree brush just to fill in all the empty space there and make it feel really 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 dense oh yeah that's looking awesome so this spot here i decided with the um i totally know the name of it but the mod that allows you to do this <laughs> that allows you to add uh, retaining walls to things so i figured i'd come in here with that uh awesome uh retaining wall mod and sort of just go ahead and add uh, the retaining walls to it. <laughs> and I think it ends up looking really, really, really good. Like the end product I am so pleased with here. You'll see it. Oh yeah. Yeah, look at that with the retaining walls. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. I am super, super pleased with that. So uh, yeah, that's um, pretty much gonna be it for the episode. I'm gonna draw down some rail, but uh, yeah, I'll leave you here with the footage, and I'll connect with all of you in the live play. So, just a quick correction. Uh, I'm going to jump the gun, and we still have a fair amount, couple minutes of footage left to show that I wanted to talk about here. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, let's discuss. Um, the episode's not wrapping up yet. We are going to add a trumpet interchange here, and it looks a little bit rough, but I think, I, I honestly think I might come in and build my own trumpet interchange. It's inspired by this interchange here in north or west. It's like kind of in between them, splits the lane between north and west Vancouver. Um, so I do want to do an area like this, like an area inspired by north Vancouver, an area inspired by west Vancouver in this build as well across the water. Now that's a ways out. We're not going to get into that yet but i at least want to start planning for that infrastructure and i totally forgot but this episode we get people moving in here people live here i jumped the gun man i was way too uh <laughs> i was way too early on that the episode is not even uh yeah we're not done <laughs> we're not done we need to get people into the city first so i'm gonna come in here and place the trumpet for this highway 
And it's pretty cool again with how the roads work here that can get that to line up. And I could if I wanted to. Now, again, we're not focused on detail in this area. It's just to help get people into the city as we build and detail out the downtown. So I figured here we can just leave it. We'll eventually come in and detail it. And we might actually just build it ourselves. Like the built-in custom asset is super cool and they're super useful, right? Uh, the, the, especially with how many built-in interchanges there are now. But I just don't think that we needed it uh, or that I am going to use it. I think I can come up with something better. Again, it's literally a trumpet because that's what's there in real life. But I think I could come up with a better trumpet myself there. So we're going to carry on here and get that in so that we can start to get people in. And I know the heights look a little bit extreme here. But trust me, I have done a test run of this build before. I'm going to be able to blend these heights. They're going to be less extreme and less noticeable <laughs> as the series goes on. But I mean, Vancouver's like, you know, on that little island, uh, that little peninsula area, right, for the downtown Vancouver. Um, but north of West Vancouver, man, they're like on a heckin' mountain. Like, they are very, very hilly. Now, I'm going to add something here, and I'm going to make a formal request that we not talk about what's here. It's a little bit greasy. Oh, that's greasy. That's really fucking greasy. Yeah, that's greasy. Greasy. It's a little bit greasy, but, uh... We need power as for our, our citizens, and we also need water and sewage, and I don't know where I want to put them yet. I was hoping to figure it out in this episode. Well, I mean, I guess technically I did figure it out in this episode. It's just what we're doing on screen here to all the people that are watching right now. Don't tell anybody about this. It's going to be our little secret. And, uh, yeah, we're just going to forget about how greasy that was to get... Uh, you know, to import water and sewage and electricity off in that beautifully undetailed uh, little spot of land. <laughs> now, the other thing I'm going to do here as well that I learned from Poplar Ponderosa is we're going to reduce the taxes on educated people to help encourage those people to come into our city. This also does help to fill in low rent houses, and they're some of my favorite buildings to use in the game. So that's pretty cool. It does help to fill those significantly. And just in general, I see the population go up when we get low rent citizens coming in. Up the taxes on commercial and industry and office there to 12% as well. Um, so we're just going to up those and uh, see. And uh, sure enough, we're going to start to get people coming into the city. And let's find, actually, right here, our first citizen. And uh, I say, why not? Let's follow this person, right? This is the McCoy. Yeah, Hayden McCoy. The McCoy family going to the Figueroa building. And uh, yeah, let's follow them. That's our first citizen. This is where I'm going to wrap up the video now. And this time, I won't be back. I'll be back in a live play version. So, uh, yeah, I'll meet you all in the live play version. That's Hayden McCoy, first citizen of the city. We're following them on Chirper. So, uh, yeah, go Hayden. Um, I'll see you all in the live play. Welcome everybody to the live play portion of the video and as you can see we have a lot of people coming into the city now for where we left off on the video which is really cool. The city is up and running. Still zero on the population but I think that will go up as the time progresses in game because if we do look at the buildings we can see that we do have people. Yeah residents there we go. <laughs> we do have people actually living in the city which is cool. Um Nobody in that one yet, hey? I wonder. I think we can figure this out. Also, I always forget about this mod, too. Um, I don't know which mod is doing this, but you can actually lock the building level now. So if you hover over it here, it says lock building level. If this is set, then the building will be prevented from changing levels and therefore keep its appearance unchanged. And that's something that we definitely want. So for buildings that we place or zone, really cool. I, and again, I, I wish I knew what mod uh that was it might be related to if, if i was to assume it would be related to plop the growables so i'm thinking that's kind of what it is hopefully <laughs> um, 
So yeah, we got those ones locked. We got people moving to the city and we've got kind of the beginnings of our layout here, what the road layout is going to be. Now it's going to be a much different grid than what Vancouver's actually is. I might change some of these roads and make it a little bit more gridded. But again, this was never meant to be a one-to-one, -one, like, oh, we're building Vancouver exactly one-to-one, -one, right? This is meant to be a city that is inspired by Vancouver, but through my own sort of vision and what we can really do in City Skylines too. So yeah, never meant to be a one-to-one -one, and I kind of really like this starting layout and I like that it's not a perfect grid uh, because broken grids are just so much more interesting to me. I, I love them so much uh, and I cannot wait until we get like actual proper sailboats, whether that be from assets or DLC. It also does look like I got to raise these up a bit here and actually let's just do that together because we have move it which is still so oh my god so awesome that we got move it it's so surreal i gotta keep an eye as well too on the water levels uh because i think our height is good i think we'll be fine from flooding but i did see flooding at, that was seen very briefly in the episode where i came uh, earlier in the episode of the time lapse portion where i did terraform along here and i want to address this in the live play and uh maybe yeah i don't know i i'm not totally happy with the shape of this i think i can do much much better and i think i actually want to scale this back a bit so expect this to see like our version of stanley park to ex expect it to see a lot of different revisions and whatnot in that area so this one's not at all close to the, the final product <laughs> obviously where the road goes and whatnot that'll be final and the more i look at it the more i am happy that we chose again i i get it like it's it's such an iconic bridge right you look at it you know what it is it's the golden gate bridge um you know whether you live in america or not i think most of us to a degree are familiar with what this is and, and know it when we see it but it is just so similar despite the color it is just so similar to the the Lionsgate Bridge in Vancouver that, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I think we're gonna keep it. I think this is the one to go with, right? It stands out where if you come back here, you really can get a cool sort of view. Right now, depending, right, we're going to have lots of big. It's going to be a really big downtown, right? Really dense, lots of glass, lots of skyscrapers. But I think there will be those moments because I do want to do preserved view corridors. So I think there will be those moments where the bridge peers through and becomes sort of a focal point for this city. Uh, and because of the scale of it compared to the other bridges that we have available to us, it's just so good. And the fact that it's got like that curve and you can just see that curve from so far away where the ships are going to go under. I'm, I'm quite pleased with that. Yeah, I think this is the one that we go with. But uh, yeah, that was the episode. We um, did some stuff, got people in, <laughs> got power, got water, got a bridge. It's all connected now. And I think next episode, we're going to really start expanding the city, right? So now that things are connected, we can focus on expanding this area out. And I'm quite pleased with this kind of detailing. Now, this is something where I'll film you know, maybe a little bit, maybe let's say like 30 seconds of me putting this together just so you guys get the idea of what I'm detailing because I know a lot of people like that detailing and that's something that I would slow the footage down for. And then I would just cut out the portion where I, you know, copy and paste essentially do this around the whole road because nobody needs to see that. You know that I'm going to do it around the whole road and now you know what parts make up the detailing that I'm doing. So let's, you know, move on to something more exciting in the video, right? And I think that's how that series is going to go. But now that we've got like... I hadn't really come down here in the last episode when we placed these buildings, but this is going to look really cool down here, right? We've got the little marina there again. Oh, I just want sailboats. <laughs> I think it would look so good and give me bikes, please. But like, I think that is, oh man, that's going to look so cool. And we're going to have another point of interest, obviously, with the bridge, which is going to be over here. Because I think I'm going to put another road right through here. And then, of course, this road that we did in this episode that curves up and like that is, oh man, that is going to be an awesome shot there. Oh, and perfect timing, right as we're wrapping up the episode, the season that I dislike the most because of the coloring, winter has arrived. That's great. That's awesome. I could not be happier. That is going to be so much fun shooting cinematics with that. I think I'm just going to reload to a save that had uh, <laughs> that had summer for the <laughs> visuals of this series. So expect summer cinematics here. And uh, yeah, that's it for this episode. Thank you so much for taking the time to check out this video. I'm Canadian Moose Plays. And if you enjoyed the content, consider leaving a like or subscribing and check out the Discord to connect further. 
A huge shout out to my patrons, Disney Dude, Fish Bob, Brayguard, The Yed, and Anthropophagic. I will catch you all on the next episode.